And our word for today on this memorial of St. Maximilian Kolbe, priest and martyr on this Wednesday, August the, 3rd, uh, August the 14th, our word for today is listen. Listen is our word for today, and here to talk about it, Deacon Dan Brer. Good morning, Deacon Dan. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Ron. <clears throat> uh, clarification, the procession starts at 9 o'clock tonight in Cary. 9 o'clock tonight, yeah. It's on, it's on here. I just missed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 9 o'clock. So, okay. But go down there and hang out for until 9, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. It's a perfect day for it, right? Everything looks really nice outside, so mm-hmm. yeah. <clears throat> should, should be, the weather should cooperate. So today's word of the day is listen. Um, <clears throat> and I was thinking about, uh, I'm sure that we've all had this experience. I'm sure, Ron and Dave, you had this experience where you are at Mass, and the priest or deacon preaches a 10-minute homily, and mm-hmm. it's over, and about five minutes later, you can't remember a word they said. <laughs> or, <laughs> right? Or you've been to a yeah. graduation, you hear a commencement speaker speak, you know, for 15 minutes, and afterwards somebody says, what did he talk about? And you say, I actually have no idea. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a very human experience. We have so much going on in our lives, and we have so many distractions in our minds that we can hear someone, but without actually listening to them at all. Mm-hmm. Um, the image that comes to my mind is, remember Charlie Brown's cartoons? Remember the teacher in the cartoons, whenever she speaks, what does she say? Because that's all the children are actually hearing, right? Mm. It's kind of like when you talk to a dog, you know, and you're saying to the dog, hello, you know, and the dog's hearing, wah, 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 wah. So, um, you know, so, so what's happening in that, in that cartoon is the children are hearing her, but they're not actually listening to her. So mm. there's a Hebrew word for listen, it's shema, and that word means to pay close attention. And so there's a difference between hearing what somebody says and really truly paying attention to those words. And so uh, we hear that throughout Scripture, um, it, that not only listening to, wor- to the Word of God, but acting on it. So Proverbs chapter 8, it says, Whoever answers before listening, theirs is folly and shame. And we've been in that situation before. You're talking to somebody, and they're already coming back with something. They're clearly not even listening. You know, or James chapter 1, James is really outspoken on this. He says, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. So, you know, quick to listen, but slow to speak. Be doers of the word, he says, and not listening only, deluding yourselves. Mm -hmm. So his point is not just to listen to God, but to actually pay attention to him and do something about it. And so Jesus says something similar in Matthew's Gospel. He says, everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them, will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. Notice Jesus is making the distinction between hearing him and actually listening to him and then doing something about what they've been told. So in today's Gospel, we hear one of a collection of teachings of Jesus to his disciples, and he tells them that if someone sins against you, go and tell him, um, just keeping it between the two of you. And he notes that if your brother or sister listens to you, and you, then you've won him or her over. But if the other person does not listen, you're to take two or three witnesses along. And he goes on to say, if he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Well, neither the Gentiles nor the tax collectors were liked very much in those days. And Jesus is essentially saying to treat them as an outcast, to excommunicate them, if you will, until they're ready to really address the problem. So Jesus is really getting to the heart of the matter here. The idea is that another person who offends us may hear us telling them about the problem, but they might not be listening to us. In other words, they may not pay attention to what we're really saying uh, or do anything about it. And so the Gospel ends with that famous verse where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Some people use that verse to argue that prayer is really only effective if two or three people pray together. But that's not really true. You have to look at the context of that phrase. I think that verse is misquoted a lot. What Jesus is explaining there is how to resolve conflict when somebody sins against somebody else. And he's saying that if you or a friend who offended you, or perhaps a witness or two, call on him to help. He'll be present. He'll answer your prayer. But Jesus alone knows what's in our hearts, and he'll help us to address that problem. But his presence is an essential part of resolving conflict. So the good news here, even if somebody else won't listen to me, I can be assured that Jesus will always listen to me. 
He'll pay attention to our needs, and He gives us what we need when we need it. And thus, the key word in that gospel is listen. Mm. Love it, Deacon Dan. And if we had more time, I would get into, uh, I'd ask you about, you know, who this, uh, who this um, is, is pointed at, this idea of going to correct your brother. Is that for all of us? Is, that, is it different for the ordained? We'll save that for another time. Thank you, Deacon Definitely. Dan.